Alrighty, we are back for another tutorial. Someone had asked um, a couple of questions about composure and outputting, and um, if I could make a tutorial about that. So this is, I guess, the extent of my knowledge of how to do that. Um, uh, so sort of the reason you would want to do this, um, a couple of reasons. Um, this is basically the way to get um, sort of your final image out of Unreal uh, in a very broadcast friendly way. Um, it's also uh, very handy for monitoring uh, what you are seeing in Unreal as uh, you can't actually run the game twice or have it sort of two viewports playing at the exact same time in Unreal. So this is another way to get sort of a different view out of Unreal at the same time. Um, and then when we're looking at uh, sort of the, our virtual camera in VR, um, this is a great way to get the viewfinder of that camera out of Unreal to get to a director's monitor or something so someone else can monitor and see what you're doing in VR as well. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at how it all works in a blank project and then we're going to look at putting it in our VR camera. Uh, so I'm just going to do blank as always. Um, so the first things to note is uh, I'm using black magic. You can also use AGA, AJA cards. Um, as for black magic, the uh, Unreal's website or um, documentation says there's there's three cards that supposedly work with this plugin. Um, there are more. I'm using a card that it doesn't say or is not listed as working and tested. I'm using the um, SDI 4K. Um, now, uh, supposedly all the deck link cards work, um, although I haven't got confirmation of all of them working. Um, even the mini monitor and mini recorder that go over Thunderbolt for laptops and stuff, um, I, some people have said it's worked. Um, I haven't got. I can't confirm 100% that. Uh, I can confirm this one. The 4K one works. Um, what I can confirm doesn't work is the Intensity Pro card. Alrighty. So we're going to start by um, enabling the plugins we need for this project. Um, so you will need Composure uh, enabled. Um, now, there was a Blackmagic, and for that matter, the AGA one. Uh, plug-in on the marketplace as of uh, 4.25 that is uh, that is bundled with Unreal now you don't have to get it off the marketplace uh, so you just find it just type black magic I don't actually know what it's under uh, and enable that one as well so what we're going to do is we're going to do a basic setup here uh, I'm just going to delete the player start and add a cinema camera anchor like so let's just spin it around that uh, and then we also want to go to composure so if you don't have the composure window open it's window and then composure so what we need to do is create a new composure or uh, comp sorry empty and create a new layer of that um, now here is sort of where you get a bit more into composure I have no interest in doing live action stuff in Unreal so I'm probably not going to go into any sort of depth into how to do sort of green screens and stuff like that with Unreal but uh, you have three options here um, so the first one is a media plate and that takes the input of the card um, and that's where you would input your footage uh, the next two are the CGI uh, CG layer which is sort of um, the CG scene with or without that media plate in it. Um, and then last is the CG mat, which is a black and white uh, sort of like an alpha or opacity map, uh, sort of showing cutouts of various things. Uh, as it says here, what we want to use for this, at least this example, is the CG layer. Uh, and that'll create like that. Now, if we find the CG element in our world outline, uh, we can scroll down and we can actually change its input for its camera source from inherited to override and select our cinema camera. All right, so what next is uh, getting this out? So uh, it's quite simple. So we just want to create a new asset uh, and under media, once you've enabled the Blackmagic plugin, you'll see the media source and media output. Um, for us, we're going to use the media output just call it uh, output, I guess, like that. 
Now, over back to Composure under its output for the CG elements, um, we're going to add a new output and we're going to make it Media Capture, which it does by default. <laughs> and we're going to drag our Blackmagic card and drop it in there. Like that. Um, the last thing we need to do, I sort of skipped ahead a bit, is we actually need to configure it. So if we open it up like this uh, under configuration, here we go. So yeah, there's my cards. So everyone's seen it now. It's working. Uh, 1080p we're going to do. Um, going to do progressive. Going to do 24 frames a second. And we're going to leave it on free run. Apply. Alright, and so in the corner, depending on what corner I put it in, you will now see I'm actually recording the output on the monitor. Um, for this, I'm using uh, one of Blackmagic's converters to go from SDI to HDMI. Even though it says all deck link cards will work, um, it uh, a lot of people have said that the HDMI ports on the cards, even the ones that the Unreal documentation explicitly says works with the plugin, do not work. You have to use SDI. So that's why I'm using a SDI to HDMI converter which are not very expensive, so no biggie. So um, you may notice something a little different from uh, what is being caught or captured on the monitor versus what I'm seeing, and that is a sort of a wild difference in the color. Um, so this is some sort of weird conversion thing because Unreal's, the way Unreal handles um, visuals is a bit strange, and then converting that into say Rec 709, uh, which is then going, into the monitor and so along the way something gets jumbled uh, so that's where this color conversion comes down now I can't um, I found a workaround but I can't find uh, probably the legit way of doing it I think it will have something to do with this open color IO uh, but I'm still looking into that um, so in the meantime uh, we can do a bit of a workaround um, so first we're going to add a cube in like so and just bring it up into the camera view and Shrink it by half. 0.5. Let's move it over a bit. You can just set it to immovable. Uh, now on our cinema camera, we want to change the focus because we want it to be in focus. Uh, let's select that like that. Now it's in focus. Uh, and so because we enable starter content, if you go into the starter content and go to materials, uh, we have this color grid low spec. If you drag and drop that in, we get a sort of color chart. Uh, and so now in my case, one of my monitors uh, is not color calibrated. So this will be sort of an exercise in futility. But what we can do is we can play around under the this tone map. If you drop it down, you have some color grade settings and film stock settings. And you can sort of fiddle with these values to get uh, close matching uh, things. So if you're doing completely CG, then... Um, this isn't going to be very important because obviously what we record on this monitor we're not actually going to be using we're going to be rendering it out at a later date uh, if you're doing sort of live streaming you need a live feed out of Unreal again uh, this is going to be a lot more important um, and in that case you probably got more monitors that are color calibrated than I do um, the basic fix I found is actually just ramping up the gamma to about 1.6 like that and you get pretty close results um, you can keep fiddling with this I'm sure uh, and get something even closer but yeah 1.6 1.7 on the gamma and that's good enough for uh, if it's just for a director's viewfinder or something then that is a-okay and just like that we're done so now we have this output coming through SDI which is a uh, well-known standard uh, for our viewport we can even play the game um, obviously I'm not playing the camera so it's not going to move but I can look around and do things I can actually fly into the camera Hello. Um, I can also you know if we take control of the camera oh I've got to re-enable the output there we go um, let's cinema camera actor here we go now I can move it around uh, now you'll notice things are a bit jittery especially if you 
move the camera around. Um, and that is simply because if we have a look here, my viewport's running at, well, it's bouncing around because I'm also recording, but uh, 100 FPS, uh, but we're recording at a cinematic 24 FPS. So we're not gonna get, what, what looks nice and smooth in the viewport isn't actually gonna be, you know, nice and oh, as smooth in our final render. So, uh, as for the last thing in uh, this sort of little tutorial, I'm going to uh, add this to the VR camera we've been working on. Um, so, this will and sh sort of demonstrate how this could work as a director's viewfinder for that. Alrighty, so to add this to the VR camera we have been using is rather quite easy because we've been uh, using Composure already to do the viewport on the camera in VR. Uh, so to add the output to it, all we have to do is enable the Blackmagic uh, plugin, add our uh, card here, uh, and add a second output pass to our uh, Composure element, CG element, that's the word, uh, and add the black magic card, like that. And so it'll straight away, it'll just work. Alrighty, and just like that, uh, we can see the um, viewfinder in VR, and we can also uh, have dodgy camera setups. I don't actually think there's any cameras looking this way can also have a viewfinder outputting that video. Um, now, obviously, as with everything, this creates a bit of a um, performance impact. Um, and depending on what you have enabled and stuff, you may want to fiddle with the engine scalability settings so that uh, you can uh, mitigate the performance impact of this. But this is a great way of getting, um, you know, getting an external source to review uh, the footage you're capturing as you're capturing it in VR. So you get to be in VR, they don't get to be in VR, but they get to see uh, what your VR camera is seeing. Which I think is rather awesome. Alrighty. Thanks for watching. Oh, that's the first time I've ever said that. Maybe I'll cut it.